Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome once again to your live Investment Dominator Q&A call. And as usual, I'm Warren Davis, and we are here to answer your questions that you have for regarding the Investment Dominator. And hope all of you have had a great week so far and that you're ready for a great weekend. We certainly are. This is Thursday. It is the 31st. Uh, a lot of you out there, that's big time Halloween celebration. Uh, we don't do too much celebrating Halloween, especially since uh, no children are in the house. Um, but, and uh, we are also in the middle of a move, a move, a uh, major move. We, we bought a new house and so we just moved in, um, well, <laughs> last last week actually, but uh, we, we didn't finish moving in until I got back from Denver from the live event on uh, last weekend. So uh, this last Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday and yesterday and today, this morning, we are moving and uh, getting ready to uh, and I, I'm currently living out of boxes, so I just got done scrambling right before the broadcast to get uh, <laughs> to get some of my information that I usually share on the broadcast. In any case, we're here, and we're glad to be here with you. I hope that you can all hear me and see my screen. You can see the LPG deal flow, and if someone would just give me a uh, thumbs up, let me know you can hear me okay, and that uh, you can see my screen, I would appreciate that. I just set up my computer in this new office yesterday, so I'm hoping, I, I'm thinking I'm coming through loud and clear, but uh, can everybody hear me out there? Okay, great. Thank you, Anof, and thank you, Elizabeth. All right, I appreciate that. So I uh, have some visibility as to how many of you are on the call today. Ah, uh, thank you, Elizabeth. It's it's great. Uh, it's, it's always exciting to move into a, a new place. Uh, not that we've done it for a long time, but um, I think you understand what it's like living out of boxes. Um, okay, someone says I'm 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 got a, they got an echo. Okay, is that better? I adjusted my my mic. It's on my head actually, so it's a headset I wear. In any case, uh, I'm sure you all understand what it's like when you're you're living out of boxes and you're trying to find things. <laughs> so anyway, we're here and we're going to get started. I do want to make an announcement uh, for um, with regards to. Let me make sure I got my correct one. Okay, yeah, November 14th of uh, so next month. So it's a couple of weeks, actually two weeks from today, we will be canceling the webinar because we will be having the LPG two-day maximizer workshop. It will be held in, uh, I think it's currently going to be held in uh, Scottsdale. So those of you that are going to be there, we're looking forward to seeing you in person again and being able to carry you through all of the LPG deal flow as it relates to the investment dominator, the hands-on investment dominator course. And, uh, that's going to be a great time. So let's uh, let's start with the question question we had from uh, Monday with uh, Natasha. Natasha's question had to do with uh, printing mailing labels as it, as it's done in offers. So that was the first question that uh, I just wanted to address, actually, and and. I can't really address it in terms of showing you how you're going to do this, Natasha, if you're on the call. But uh, I did want to let you know that we are still working on a resolution. I was able to read your question and understand it. I think it's, it's basically you want to print mailing labels the same way you produce mailing labels when offer letters are created. Um, so I, I'm pretty sure that's what you're trying to do. and. I'm um, working on, a, on, on kind of a workaround, a way that we can maybe fool the system into thinking it's printing an offer, but it's actually going to be printing uh, mailing labels for your 
prospects. And um, uh, hey, Marisol's on the phone. How you doing, Marisol? <laughs> so good to see your name come across. Um, had a chance to meet so many of you in Denver, and it was extremely uh, nice to put faces to those names. So uh, just, just want to let you know, Natasha, if you are there on the call with us, that we'll be looking for a solution for that issue, um, a workaround for printing mailing labels, as we do in with offers. Okay, so I'm just going to, I'm, I'm not even going to really put it as a, an answer. I'm just going to say that we're going to be working, we're currently working on that particular resolution for you. We try to, uh, like I say, if I don't answer your questions today, if I don't get them answered today, I will definitely have them answered, you know, hopefully by Monday. If I uh, need to consult with anybody or if I just need to take some time and think about it. that's normally what I have to do. I just have to think about what you all are asking as your questions come across. So I appreciate you asking the question. And we, we had um, one on Monday from Phil. Phil Bashaw had a chance to see Phil again in uh, Denver. It's great as usual to talk with you, Phil. I hope you're on the call. So as a person who does um, their own printing, and I, I noticed there's several uh, people now that are, you know, printing their own neutral letters, producing their own neutral letters. They're doing the stuffing and the um, mailing and, and stamping and putting them on. Just wanted now. Now Phil's question was around as we as he's doing his printing, he wants to be able to produce right about 2,000 of them. And uh, I don't I don't see any brand new people on the call, so I didn't go through how exactly to answer your, uh, send your questions in. So if anybody has any concerns about sending in your questions, go ahead and type something in the chat, and I will uh, I'll be able to see it. So hopefully right now you can see my investment dominator screen and I'm going to uh, work up a resolution um, filled to your issue. You basically wanted to produce, you know, send in about 2000 records or have about 2000 records imported in one day. And as those records are imported, uh, you know that they put the current date because that's so far as the system is concerned, that's when you're processing that record. So if I you know, have all these prospect records in the system and I go up here and I do a generate documents, as you know, when we go in and we look at our neutral letter, that's gonna go out to all of the folks. Let me bring a copy of it up over here. Okay, computer is acting like it doesn't want to cooperate. But anyway, here we go. Here's your neutral letter. And as you can see, October 31st, it always prints the current day because that's um, on the system as a, it's actual, um, a, an embedded date field that automatically prints the current day. So, Phil, we're going to, uh, I, I came up with a workaround or a solution, hopefully, to how you might get, a, get around this issue where you want to print um, like 500 at a time, but that's after importing, you know, 2,000 at one time. Then you want to do 500 each week. And uh, so the system is actually going to um, put your current day on there unless you have a custom document and uh, there, because there's no way to, to modify that date dynamically. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. If we go into customize and we look at custom documents, uh, there's a sample neutral letter that I already have up. Neutral letter 02, let's see, we'll edit this. And as you can see, current date is what is going to show automatically. So, so what we came up with, Phil, was a way that uh, you could 
print your dates each week. Um, there'll, there'll be a little manual work for you to do in the system. So as I go back to land deals, and let's just say I want to, you know, these were all of my prospects that I just brought into the system. And what you can see on my screen right now is you have numbers 264 and it goes up to 287, all right? So let's pretend, you know, we have 2,000 records we just brought in. So what we're what we have to do is as you as you brought in the first, you know, as you brought in 2000, what you have to do is you you want to use this ID range and basically select your records that you want to process. So let's say I brought in 2000 today. So this is October 31st. So I do want to print like the first um, I want to select the first 500. Well, you use your you use your range here, your ranges of uh, IDs, which are unique identifiers associated with each record. And so what I would do is I would go in here and I'd do a search. I'd find my property ID range, and we'll just say from 282 right now because that's I just want to do a test here. 282 through 287. Okay, now. If this were your 500, obviously it would be whatever your unique identifier, because when when you bring in these records, it's going to sequentially give you a unique number for every single record that you brought in. So for today's date, you'd obviously want 282 or, or whatever the number is, like one through 500, all right, um, is your range and you search for those and it's just gonna bring up those records, right? Then you would do a select all, and then you could go and you could generate your documents at this level. Don't use this, this level up here, but you use this level, your lower level, your gray level, because it's associated with all the records that you have um, brought into the system, right? So you generate, and then you'd print all of these records, which would have the current date. That makes sense? Okay. So then to create um, your second 500, like, like next week when you come in, you want to then select the, and I'm just going to clear this search. So the second week when you came in, you would select your next records using your ID search and let's just pretend here so we're doing 268 uh, let's 266 through um, 281 right so again I come in um, but even before I did this before I did this what you'd have to do come under customize you'd have to create a custom document and you don't go in here and you'd hit add document and you basically, Phil, want to come up with a custom document, and you might call it, you know, Phil's uh, Custom Neutral 01, something like that. But you would create your own custom neutral letter, like I have a neutral letter here, 02. And as I edit it, instead of having this current date here, let's say if it were next week, um, we'll say, it would have to be, you'd have to hard code November 6th, 2019. And this is your, now your date for all of your custom records. And um, I'm gonna update this here. Okay, November 6th. And so our custom, our new neutral letter now, if we go in and we do a document preview, Okay, as you can see, it has November 6th, 2019. So this is gonna be the best way for you to get your custom document created. You have to create one, put your date in there, and then when you come now and you select the next set of records next week, you know, you'll select, uh, you know, 500 more. We're just pretending here. So pretending this was my my 500 
you know, and the way you would do that is you would have to find the, the identifiers, the numbers that you want to print the next week. And, you know, you come in do a property ID range, right? You search, uh, and I just selected 266 through 281. And I'm going to search, it's going to bring up just those records. I'm going to say select all, and then I'm going to generate my documents here at this level. Um, just for those records. Okay, but now remember, I don't want to use this prospect letter. I want to come down here and I'm going to use my neutral letter, the new neutral letter that I that I created. In your case, it would be Phil's neutral letter, um, whatever. And when you now when you out when you download those records. As you can see, it's going to show my November 6th records or my, my November 6th date, right? For each of those records, and that's next week. So then the following week, you're gonna do the same thing again. Same thing again. I'm just gonna clear my search because we're just pretending that we're doing this. You know, you select another 500 using your ID range, right? So if we selected 264 through 268, 263, let's say through 266. And I'm just going through this so you can see this. If you play this back, you'll be able to see everything I'm doing, uh, 264. Now these, this again is your 500 records that you're doing the following week. And I'm, I'm sure you guys are catching on, but I wanna make sure you, you get this. Let's say 263 through 266. I'm going to search, select those records, select all, come over here to generate documents. And, you know, obviously, before you even generated the documents at this level, right, you want to make sure that you go back in for that week under custom documents, you find your custom, your neutral letter, Phil's neutral letter, you edit it, and you're gonna say, now it's gonna be November 13th. Then you update, and you're gonna get back to your other 500 records, then you're going to search again, do your property ID range. I think you're getting the point through 266. Search. All right. Select all. Select all those records. You're going to generate documents at this level. And again, you want to use whatever neutral letter that you have. And when you download it, There you go. So your neutral letters now have November 13th. So for there was a couple of folks that said, you know, they print theirs like this. Now, Phil just happens to want to do what we call some stacking. He wants to make sure, um, even though he's got 2,000 records in the system, he only wants to print 500 each week, or he wants only 500 of them to go out each week. So this was the only workaround I could think of because there's really no way to modify these dates um, as they come out of Investment Dominator. This is hard-coded fields. Um, and, <clears throat> okay. All right, so this is just one, one, uh, one procedure that, uh, that you can do, and hopefully, okay. Oh, okay, um, we got a question. Hopefully, Phil, that that will address the process that you want to you want to do each week after you have um, 500 records in the system. Now, for those of you that are brand new, see what what I recommend uh, rather than bringing in you know you, you have 2,000 records. 
that you bring in at one time. But I understand what Phil wants to do. Phil is basically trying to save, you know, maximize his time. So he wants to do all of his printing and and all uh, bringing everything into Investment Dominator um, and producing, you know, his neutral letters. Um, he wants to, you know, do everything he can on uh, on one day. So. Um, so, but he wants them, he wants to mail out 500 each week. So basically he'll get his max, he'll, he'll get 2000 into the system and he can go through each 500 and print it that day, but he won't mail it out until like, you know, the week it comes up for it, November 6th, then November 13th, November 20th, etc. So, um, but those of you that are brand new, uh, we always recommend that you only bring into the system the records that you're going to process that day. So basically, I would have only imported the 500 records that I want to process and print that day, bring that into Investment Dominator. Then you're dealing with all your prospect status records at one time. Um, uh, rather than, you know, some folks have brought in like several thousands records at one time and they only want to print, you know, three or 400 at a time. So they have to manage all their records in Investment Dominator. We recommend you don't import those records until you are ready to produce your mailings, okay? So that's just for new people. Uh, so let me get Marisol's question here. So it says uh, where to change the date. Oh, I, I think I understand what you're saying, Marisol, to get um, um, to let to let uh, your sellers know when you send out your offers that you have six months to close um, for notifying sellers six months to close. Okay. All right, I can show you. Okay, you're still seeing my investment dominator screen. We have a field in document template settings. So I went under customize and then I'm going to left click on document template settings. Um, and this is where you will control that particular function. As you can see here, this default offer expires on um, close of escrow. That's the, that's the field that you're looking for. When you're going to close escrow and you just simply set it at 180 days. I think it defaults to 90 days, I believe, um, if you're, when you first come into this investment dominator. But this is for your sale agreements or your contracts that you're gonna send out to your sellers to say, hey, um, you know, I've done my research on your property. I'm going to send you this offer, but I'm going to close on, I'm not going to close for six months. And that's, you set it to 180 days and you're good. If you're doing options, you have an option expiration uh, that you can also set to 90 or 180 days. So that's where you set that under the document template settings. Hope, uh, hope everybody got that. And you are quite welcome, Marisol. I want you to be very successful in this business and I believe you are rocking and rolling already. So let's look at uh, another question um, that we got in, I think from Arnulf. Uh, Arnulf is going to be sending out his first mailer. Congratulations, Arnulf. It's kind of exciting when you send out those first mailers. And you wanted a good person that can scrub your list. All right. Someone that is knows how to put it in investment dominator format. Um, to scrub. Uh, mailing list out of Investment Dominator. Who is the person? Okay. Okay, we're easy. 
used uh, I've used someone that uh, is very good and um, very fast. I'm thinking. I mean, she works fast in my book, uh, but it is person with the email address. All you do is email your list hero at gmail.com. Um, and I always forget her name. It's it's a I always forget her name. I'm sorry. Don't have her first name, but but you can just email your list hero at gmail.com. And all you do is send her your list that you have that you want scrubbed. And this individual, uh, she's very fast, and uh, usually she'll she'll take your list first, and then she will analyze it to see just how difficult whatever it is you're asking. So I don't know, Arnulf, if you're getting your list out of Agent Pro 247 or Rebo Gateway or uh, the other, there's another listing service that you can use. I don't know which one you're using, but if uh, if you, uh, she'll first take your list, she'll do your, her analysis and you tell her based on that number of records and how long she thinks it's going to take, take and then she'll send you back a communication with the cost for handling your particular list. And then, uh, then she puts it in investment dominator ready format and she'll send it back to you. And she usually uh, is paid via PayPal. So be prepared to pay via PayPal if uh, if you used your list hero at gmail.com. Okay. All righty. Very good people. Very good questions um, coming in today. Always appreciate that. In terms of uh, kind of around the same deal when we were dealing with the land records, land deals records on the 28th, which was Monday, Ferdinand was asking a question around this area as well. So I'm just going to go on to state kind of on this subject of, um, you know, processing records. And I'll, I'll get to some of these other questions here as soon as I can. Um, so Ferdinand's question was, can new fields, can new fields be created in the investment dominator. And, uh, and the, you know, actually the question is, uh, can we dynamically add new fields in the investment dominator? And um, the answer to that is no. Uh, unfortunately, we, we don't have that capability at this time. So what you would have to do, and, and the reason being, Ferdinand, is because any new fields that are, I'm just going to show you the import. Any new fields that are brought into the investment dominator or any CRM or any application, import, any fields that are brought in must be backed up. And see how to import your list. Any new fields added must be backed up with uh, programming. Usually those fields had to be have to be manipulated or they have to be edited, uh, especially so we couldn't allow individuals to just dynamically add any of these fields in investment dominator just, uh, you know, for their own personal use. So right now, there's no way for any new fields to be added without, you know, Alex and company's knowledge and uh, feels that, uh, you know, he he's going to manipulate and he's going to handle in what we call the back end through programming. So not trying to be mean about that, but just it just wouldn't work to have people just adding fields uh, dynamically. So you you cannot do that. But then your next question had to do with kind of the same. So how do you add the property size? to your investment dominator. All right. How to add property size. And uh, this is something that I, I include in my imports uh, through a couple of the, the counties that I'm working with actually supply that information. So this is importing your list 
you know, in the investment dominator. And as you can see, all I typed in is the word import. Okay. And I, when I did my search, all these different, you know, training calls came up because we've done a lot around importing, but you want to look at how to import your list for land investing. And that's where I was just at. Basically, if you wanted to include in your investment dominator list property size, these are all the different fields. And remember that the ones that are in colored are required, but property size is an optional field. And all you really have to do is just add that to your investment dominator import. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. So here I am, you know, property zip, property state, um, and you don't see property size on here. So I can take any one of these fields and I'm just going to insert, you know, a column and uh, basically I'm going to add property size. For the benefit of those of you that are new, uh, understand that when we're, as we're looking at these different fields, they have to be spelled exactly the same with exactly the same upper or lower case text letters that you see here. So, so for property size, it wouldn't work to make it anything other than capital P, R-O-P-E-R-T space capital S-I-Z-E. Sometimes individuals, you know, will put in a small case letter. Well, Investment Dominator is looking for property to be capitalized with a P and size to be have a capital S. And spelled exactly the same way as you see here. So just for the benefit of new folks, you've got to use exactly the fields that you see here. Don't, don't try to uh, you know, make them lowercase or whatever uh, because Investment Dominator will not accept that and will just uh, throw it out as an error, okay? So keep that in mind. So that's how you add property size. You just come in and you put it into Investment Dominator and usually it's in denominations like uh, you know, 1.5. Okay, 1.5 is you know, 1.5 acre parcel or you know, 2.3 you know, two acres and then a third of an acre. So that's usually the de denomination it's put in. Uh, you'll see in your uh, company, excuse me, you'll see in the county records, the ones that supply you the property size, um, you'll see that kind of uh, denomination, okay? Hopefully that helps uh, clear up a little bit about that. And so we're getting some uh, business questions here. Okay, I think we got through enough. We got through what Marisol was asking, and um, we have some more folks. So good to see so many of you on the call today. Okay. Um, okay, Nancy's asking what's the maximum number to upload. Maximum number to upload into Investment Dominator at a time. Okay. So, Nancy, I'm not sure exactly why, what you're seeing in terms of uh, if the system is giving you some kind of message, but I know I've uploaded, um, you know, several thousand records at a time in the investment dominator. So you should be able, if you have a file um, right now, I've got some files that I've uploaded in investment dominator that have like 4,500 records in them. And I'm not going to upload them right now, but I'm just looking to make sure I'm not telling you a story about how many records I uploaded. Let's see, demo data and 
Yes, I've got some that have 4,500, oh, 5,050 records. So, you know, if it's individual, custom, the way it's formatted, um, I have uh, I've imported a list easily um, with, as you can see, more than 500 records. We're up to 780, 900 records, 1,000 records. Um, we've imported uh, extremely large files like this, um, you know, on a couple of occasions. So I'm not sure exactly what you're saying. What we would have to know is what, are you getting an error message? And you said you only be able to seem to upload 500 at a time. So, okay. Okay. So an error saying too many records. Oh boy. Well, I have to look into that, Nancy. Um, okay, you receive an error message. An error message saying too many records. Okay. All right, well, I have never received that error message. And like I say, I've uploaded uh, records several times with more than, you know, definitely more than 500. So try again, but I, I'm going to look into that and see, I'll talk with our technical team to see if there's any scenario where we should, we get a record or, or an error message that says too many records. Um, and and we'll go from there. So uh, Nancy, I want to just continue, kind of piggyback on another question you're asking. Um, you know, can we have a dozen? I guess you're meaning a dozen fields or a dozen generic fields that you can use. Um, on your, your own way. Well, that actually is already in the system, Nancy. It would have to be interpreted. Um, I'll show you what I mean. So if, if, let's say you wanted to, I'm gonna do help again, search our user guide, and I'm gonna say import. Let's, so let's say you had some fields that you wanted to bring in that the investment dominator is not does not currently define. So uh, let's say owner's first name, owner's last name. Now remember, these fields that are colored, type, first name, last name, etc., that you see colored are required. But the other fields are not required. These are all optional fields. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Look at here, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. You have 25 fields that are optional, that are already in, that you can use in the system. So what you have to do is kind of fake up the system a little bit. Like, um, let's just say I wanted to have some other name. Um, I don't have an owner's first name or owner's last name or second owners. Let's say I don't have second owners and I wanted to bring in some field in my data that, uh, you know, I, I want to have that in my import file, but it's, it may not be the second owner's, you know, first name, but for to bring it in successfully into investment dominator, I would have to call it second owner's first name second owner's last name. And then I can put whatever data I want in that file. So it, um, let's say, 
So if I, if here's an example of my import file, um, I might use, you know, second owner's, let's see, first name, second owner's last name. And I'm trying to think of what, uh, you know, what I might put in there, but I could define a field here, call it, you know, the second owner's first name and and I could put, um, you know, I could put some some text or even a short description of, of my property, you know, uh, you know, lot three dash one. Um, you know, some short description and, you know, whatever else I wanted to put in. I could I could put that in my second owner's first name, and I could bring that into Investment Dominator because Investment Dominator will accept this particular field as a valid field. Now you have to be responsible for obviously handling the data that you put in there. Um, you know what it means, so you could you know you could interpret it how you want. We've done that on a couple of occasions with uh, Investment Dominator so that um, we could bring data in that wasn't, there wasn't a field currently defined. I'm trying to think which, which one we did it for. I think we did it for, I think we did it for the property address. Um, we changed the data, uh, but in any case, there are like 25 different fields that you could, you could look, look for there. Um, okay. All right, so let's move on here to some more great questions that we have coming in. Let me make sure I, I got all the questions from Monday. I think so far I did. Okay, uh, we did have a question regarding setting, you know, feeding um, information from a buying or selling site to another website. So I believe Ferdinand, you're asking how to do that. So how to feed info from your buying and selling site. Okay. To another website. Now, this is not a short answer. <laughs> it's not a um, it's not a very simple answer. Uh, once you get into the programming of uh, or I should say setting up your API. The API is your application programming interface, and your application programming interface is how you would set up and feed information from one of your buying sites. To your selling site. So if I have a buying or selling site here that comes up, I basically, you know, Ferdinand wants to feed information from Investment Dominator site to maybe some other website that he might already have. Uh, the best way to do this, I'm just going to call your attention to a user article set up. API. Let's search for that. How to set up an API. So again, you want to set up an application programming interface. That's what Ferdinand is attempting to do. So how to set up an API using, and you're going to use this uh, tool called Zapier.com. It's going to connect with the investment dominator. So I'm just going to call your attention, Ferdinand, to this particular article that's written up, and, and, and it's not a... Uh, you know, we can't go through it on this call, obviously, because it just is too way too cumbersome, too time consuming. And uh, I would have to have an example set up and show us how to do that. And the majority of people aren't uh, aren't sending information to another site. But as you can see, the investment denominator is all about keeping records organized and maximizing your efficiency. A great feature to help you do so is something called an API. I 
shared with the application programming interface, which allows the investor denominator to exchange information with other programs and applications that you choose. So we do have some individuals that have their own selling sites that they've, uh, they've already been using for several years. They don't want to throw away that selling site. They like the way it's formatted. So what they want to do is pull investment dominator records, um, pull some of the records or their records that are in complete ready to sell mode. They want to put them on their existing sites. Some of you out there I've been talking to lately do not use GoDaddy as your domain provider. You have another domain provider, uh, Namecheap or whatever uh, you might be using, and you need to interface with the investment dominator using uh, those applications that uh, those sites that you already got set up. So you basically want to take the information from investment dominator, push it over to that site that is already existing, and you want to you know put it in a certain format so that uh, that information can appear on your selling site, not our. Um, so it won't be formatted the way we format it in the investment dominator. You can do that, but this is how you do it. You set up a Zapier API, zapier.com connection with the investment dominator. And that information can be um, then sent to applications outside of investment dominator. Uh, just in case you need assistance, don't forget you on help and you're going to create a support ticket. So you create a support ticket and contact our technical team, which will help you then if you need any issues, you have any issues with Zapier, if you're getting messages you don't understand, please create a support ticket and specify it with as much detail as possible um, what you're doing. And it's very important that you let them know the platform that you're using. Are you using a Mac? Are you using an Android? Are you using a phone, some kind of phone? Are you using a regular PC? So are you using a tablet? Let them know. This is very important information when you come to interfacing with APIs or application programming interfaces because one may it may work one way on a computer PC. It will work completely different on a Mac. So please uh, specify as much as possible. Also specify the browser you're using. Um, you know, Internet Explorer, things work differently with Internet Explorer than they do on Chrome. So anytime you put in a trouble ticket, this is for everybody out there, please specify as much information as you can with regards to your environment. Are you using Safari, Firefox, or some other browser? And, uh, and then attach any screenshots that you're getting with error messages. This helps our technical team to analyze your issue, troubleshoot it, and come up with a timely resolution. If you leave all this information, we have to go back and forth with you to find that out. It's, uh, it's very difficult. So please uh, govern yourselves accordingly when it comes to putting in your support tickets. We'll get them handled. All right, hopefully that moves us along. Okay. Okay, let's see. We have, uh, let's see if I can, I can get some of these questions that have come in here. Um, okay. It's important to question and handle for Elizabeth here. Okay, on the two day maximizer workshop. Two day maximizer workshop. Should you preload any data? Preload prospect data. You do not have to do that. Elizabeth, uh, we will have all the data. Uh, we'll have all of the functions and any data that you need. Um, and you're asking, do you preload any records? And if so, what if we make a mistake and want to delete a record? Is it possible to delete? Yes, it absolutely is possible to delete. Um, I'll go through that real quick, you, uh, real quickly with you, Elizabeth. But first, to answer your first question, no, you don't need to preload any prospect records. We are actually going to be giving you some leads 
at the two-day workshop. And those of you that uh, have been there before, you know that those you get 500 leads that you can then, once we carry you through a deal process flow, you can take those other 499 leads or 500 leads and you can bring them back home and mail them out. And I want you to know that you get deals from that. Uh, I was uh, sharing with uh, one of the folks there on uh, at our last two day workshop where uh, we actually, out of our two day investment dominator workshop, we were able to, we were in Southern California. So we sent some leads out to Southern California, actually got a deal, 13 acres in Southern California. And we only paid $2,000 for that 13 acres. And I know one of you is really thinking about that 13 acres that we have for sale. Um, but we decided to hang on to that, that property. We didn't, uh, we closed on it and we still have it in our inventory and we don't even have it listed to sell right now because we're not selling it. We're going to just hang on to it because we've looked at, uh, that particular areas, uh, 20 year plan. And we know that there's some very interesting activity happening, hopefully in the next four to five years. Um, and even before that, if someone were to come along like a railroad or some other company that wants to, uh, has to go through our land to put their railroad, we uh, are just going cha-ching, cha-ching, and cha-ching, all right? That's the sound of money because we're uh, really excited about that. But in any case, my point was you get deals from your leads. So it's going to be great uh, for those of you that are coming. Um, if you, uh, just so you know, let's see who's just asking me that question. Just so you know, Elizabeth. Okay, if you make a mistake importing, you can always go back and delete a previous import. Um, this is very important. Uh, it's very important for a lot of you that are bringing in importing a lot of records at one time. And a lot of times you'll you'll make a mistake. I've had several students that were Basically, they imported records, and I'll just do a real quick import. They imported records. Let's use the file. Oh my goodness, I thought I had this set up here pretty good so that we could go into it without taking so much time and going through all of my different files. But I guess I didn't do that. So my apologies. Let me see here. I've got to go through and find my data. Okay. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do when I say choose file, so I'm going to choose this one here that's going to bring in, I think, I think I have six records it's going to bring in. So let's say I bring in this import, you know, that's how I choose my file. And then I say upload list. So it's uploaded successfully six records. Uh, now let's pretend that this was maybe 10,000 records. Um, I've had individuals that have actually imported um, that many records at one time. And they say, oh my gosh, I, I no way I can process all of these prospect records at one time. So here is my first, my six records, uh, Snohomish, that's actually a county. <laughs> so two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So let's say I brought in these records and this is what I was telling you about for um, Phil's issue. Remember it put in, it, it numerically assigned six new numbers to each one of those records. That's what Investment Dominator does. Every time you import, it assigns this unique property identifier. So I imported that and I think, oh my gosh, I didn't want to do that. So I go up under my team. I just left clicked on my team. I'm going to come over here to activity log. Uh, some of you have seen this a few times. The last particular function I did was today at 1253, I'm a user, and I added by, I imported a list. 
and I decide, oh, the six land deal records got added. In your case, it could be 10,000. You come over here, hover over this question mark, and you see where it says 301 through 306. And I, I always encourage you to write those numbers down because these are the numbers you're going to go back actually and delete. So then you go back into your land deals records if you have uh, made a mistake in importing. You're then going to search by, oh, excuse me, by property ID range. Property ID range is right here, these numbers. And you'll type in those numbers that you just entered, 301 to 306. And you search. And then it's going to come up with all those. And don't forget to select all because it selects everything within your last search. That's what select all will do. And you simply come over and say delete and then confirm delete. And OK, so if you've made a mistake with any import, you can go back. If I clear my search, now you notice those six records that I brought in are now gone, 301 through 306. So that's how you clear your search, or excuse me, clear your search. That's how you um, back out of a previous import that you didn't want to do. Okay, let's see if I missed some questions. Um, okay. All right. Okay, uh, Don has a real good question. Let's see if I have time to answer that. Uh, I really don't. Um, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a high level answer, Don, at this time. So you said, how do you suggest sending response, uh, sending a response to someone who is not the owner on record? Um, sending a response to someone who is not the owner on record. Um, Don, what I would do if I were if I were in that case and I knew that they were not the owner of record, we've had that where either a sibling or um, someone, you know, the child of the actual person on record. I, I address the letter to the actual owner so that they know, you know, if it's the father or if it's the mother that we know who the owner on record is. And I then I just say CO, sleeve slash O or care of, um, you know, the person that I'm responding to. So John Henry might be the owner on record. And then I would just go care of, you know, Madison Henry. Um, we, we don't know if, if John is um, incapacitated, may not be uh, lucid enough to handle any of the correspondence, but if Madison is the one that contacted you, um, I would say care of Madison. And then of course I would put the regular John Henry's um, address to get the letter to either Madison um, on behalf of John Henry. So do I modify the offer letter? No, I, I don't modify the offer letter. Keep the offer letter in John Henry's name, but I will put care of Madison Henry uh, so that it, you know, she could be the, the executor of the estate. She could have um, the, be the legal owner or have legal rights to that property because she's the one handling that in John Henry's absence. So, I would just uh, address it like that, but I wouldn't modify the uh, offer letter in any way. It's just basically who it's going to go to. And uh, dear people, that's um, that's all that we have time for today. I did uh, again. I'm living out of boxes and uh, trying to find all of my notes, etc. So let me leave you. 
what they thought today. Okay. All right. Here's a good thought that I want to leave you with today. That a successful man is one who can lay a firm foundation with the bricks that others throw at him. All right. David Brinkley said that. So a successful man or woman is one who can lay a firm foundation with the bricks that others may throw at them. Hey, folks, want you to have a great weekend and uh, wish you much success in your upcoming endeavors with your business. I'm so excited that you're in this business. This is the greatest business that uh, we've ever had the pleasure of being a part of and it has enabled me to be a retired man, even though I'm not functioning as a retired man because I have tons of work to do. But anyway, have a great weekend. We will uh, be right back here on Monday at 5 p.m. to answer some more of your questions. And if I didn't get your question answered today, I promise I will answer. Um, I'll get it answered by Monday, okay? Have a great uh, weekend, everybody. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye now.